Hi and welcome to Leitrim Daily. My name is Brett Neerly and you're listening to episode 230 of the podcast. It's the weekly sports roundup show. Today's episode... Today's episode is brought to you in association with the local enterprise office here in County Leitrim and particularly their online trading voucher, an opportunity for all small and medium-sized businesses in the county to avail of a €2,500 grant to bring your online trading presence into the 21st century. Get in touch with them, localenterprise.ie forward slash Leitrim for more information on that. Now, this weekend on the sporting pitches, it was all about the ladies. The senior championships in ladies football taking place on Saturday and Sunday in Balnamore, Leitrim Village and of course the senior final in Avoncard Park, Sean McDiarmid on Sunday afternoon. There was always going to be a new name on the trophy on Sunday with both competitors in the final not having won that championship before. Glencar Manor of course beaten finalists in the last two seasons would face the challenge of Balnamore Sean O'Heslands, a brand new entity coming out of Uchtra Gales last year. And it wasn't to be for Balnamore, with Glencar Manor finally breaking that hoodoo. Let's have a rundown of all of the scores in ladies football, a bit of junior football as well, and also some soccer fixtures taking place in the Sligo Leitrim and District League. In ladies football in the Gotham Drywall Leitrim Senior Football Championship, it was Glencar Manor Hamilton 519, Balnamore Shauna Heslins 1 9. In the intermediate final, Mohol 3 7, Drumahair 1 3. While at junior level on Sunday evening in Leitrim Village, Drum Kieran and Fianna St. Collins played out a cracking game 3 12 to 3 10 in favour of Drum Kieran after extra time in that particular clash. In the Vistamed Junior A Football Championship on Saturday evening, four quarterfinals were down for a decision. They finished as follows. Clune, 16 points, Anaduff, 1-9. Glencar Manor Hamilton, 3-11. St Mary's Kiltard, 4-7. Sean Heslins, 8 points. Glenfarn Kilty Clahar, 10 points. Ahavas, 8-18. Carrigallan, 2-6. So Clune, Glencar Manor Hamilton, Glenfarn Kilty Clahar and Ahavas all into the last four of that particular competition. The three first teams at this level still alive and kicking at the semi-final stage in the Junior A Football Championship. There was one other game of note at that level in the county, and that was the relegation playoff between Ahuillan and Gortletra. And that game finished Ahuillan 116, Gortletra 12 points, and Gortletra will drop down to the Junior B grade next year. On Sunday afternoon, also games at Junior B Football Championship, St Mary's Kiltard 2-7, Glencar Manor Hamilton 7 points. And that game was a semi-final playoff for the Junior B Championship, while a relegation semi-final, Sean Heslands 6-6 to Kiltubbards 3-9. So a two-goal victory, a six-point victory for Sean Heslands in that game. Finally, at junior C level played on Sunday afternoon also. Bornacula won 10, Leitrim Gales 2 goals and 10 points. Ahavas won 9, Nave Porrick, Drummer 2 10. So Leitrim Gales and Drummer will face off in that junior C football championship final in two weeks' time. Now, on Sunday morning in the Sligo, Leitrim and District Super League, there were wins for Manor Rangers, Drummer Hair FC and a draw for Carrick Town against early favourites for the league, Callery Bowes. And there were some great games played. The Manor Rangers travelled to Balnafad and took all three points with a massive display of firepower, scoring five without reply. Alan Hickey opened their account from the penalty spot after just seven minutes, while Paddy Wolf netted eight minutes later to leave Manor in control at the break 2-0 to the good. On the hour mark, Paddy Wolf got his second of the game from the penalty spot, while Kieran and Hafish Shola, I am apologising for how I've butchered your name, scored on his debut to wrap up all three points for Manor Rangers. In the first division, Callery Bowes were the visitors to the showgrounds in Carrick and Shannon and took the lead twice, only for Shane Byrne to score on both occasions to equalise and bring Carrick back into the game and earn a well-deserved draw, one of those Shane Byrne goals from the penalty spot. But the real story of the weekend from a Leitrim point of view in the soccer competitions locally was Drummer Hare FC winning their first ever game by the odd goal in five. Fantastic away display to Ballygawley Celtic 
and they were two goals ahead at halftime with strikes from Darren McMorrow and Conor McNiff. A goal each from Jared Murphy and Shane White had Ballygawley level in the second half, but four minutes from time, Keelan McLaughlin ripped home the third and the final goal that saw Drummer Hare take all three points. A fantastic result for them, particularly away from home against their relatively close neighbours in Ballygawley, just across the county line, but a great result for them and they'll be delighted. So congratulations to everybody involved with Drummer Hare. It's great to see them up and running and off the bottom of the table after a disappointing start when they clashed with the local Gaelic team fixtures last week. So good to see Drummer Hare in action and up and running and winning fantastic result well done to them on that result in terms of the Sligo Palettes Premier League table Kulani United and St John's lead the way two wins from two leaves them on six points with Colry Bowes and Glenview Stars and Carrick Town on four points just two points behind the leaders from here they sit in sixth place on three points while Chaff pull off a single point from their first two games. Kilglass and Escrone United, Ballygawley Celtic and Gurchin Celtic currently sit at the bottom of the table. Bizarrely though, no National League representation for the county this week. And Niall Moran and his Sligo Riverside, uh, Niall didn't feature this week. He was suspended after his red card last week. Derval Byrne, of course, on an international break. Uh, she took advantage of the break for PMAT United this weekend to win an intermediate title with Muhl on Saturday afternoon. While Myrne Devaney, not present in the Sligo Rovers under-17 women's side, uh, she also busy winning a county title on Sunday at senior level with Glencar Manor Hamilton. We'll hear from both of those girls later in the programme. So let's get on with the actual meat of the show. And we're going to be hearing from players and coaches involved in all three of those adult ladies finals over the next little while. We'll also be hearing from Carrick Towns, Cormac Smith and Alessio Mignone after their 2 all draw against Colry Bowes yesterday morning. At senior level, an absolutely cracking game from Glencar Manor. They came out with all guns blazing and they really did blow Balnamore away. They just didn't have an answer for them at the start of the game and and they opened up a six or seven point lead in the first quarter of the game. Balnamore did really hold them exceptionally well in the second and third quarter and it really was a fantastic contest to watch from a neutral point of view. But in the final quarter, unfortunately for Balnamore, Glen Carmanor just had that little bit of extra experience, the little bit of extra guile and a couple of maybe silly rookie mistakes at the back for Balnamore cost them a couple of goals that put an unfair gloss on the scoreline from a Manor Hamilton point of view. That being said, Manor Hamilton won't care how much they want to buy, just that they finally got that hoodoo off their back and they will be celebrating for some time up around Manor Hamilton, Rosinver and Glenfarren and further afield. Very well done to Glencar Manor on a fantastic season and to, to come back from that group stage defeat to Balnamore to win by such a margin yesterday was exceptionally impressive. After the game, I spoke to their captain, Emer Feely, Murren Devaney, as I mentioned, and their manager, Porrick Corrigan, as well as Laura O'Dowd from the beaten finalists, Balnamore, Sean O'Heslands. Emer Feely, one of the captains of the Glencar Manor side. Uh, we started in this, almost in this exact spot about eight weeks ago we were trying to work out. It's, uh, it's been a long eight weeks though, hasn't it? You must be delighted with how it's gone for you. Oh, definitely. Like This is a mission we came to do like and come out this end of it. Is, obviously, we always wanted to do that, but you know things don't always go your way. But thank God this year it did and like, we're coming out on top. But Panamore definitely weren't as... Well, we never considered them handy, but I suppose an upcoming team, I suppose... Two weeks ago, it was like, get St. Joseph's out of the way, Ballinamore is next. Yeah, we were definitely nervous coming into it, but they, and they definitely put it up to us. We got a few um, uh, goals and a few points in the end. You know, anyone not watching the game, just seeing the end score, would think, oh, that was a walk in the park for us, but it definitely wasn't, and the heat today was just serious. You know, it felt like an hour each half rather than a half an hour, but anyways, came out the end and we're delighted. How much confidence did you take from that semi-final victory over St. Joseph's? Because they've been your hoodoo team over the last few years uh, and uh, just set today up for you really nicely. Yeah, oh, surely. Like, you know, our, our main mission was to get over them and we, we always kind of thought maybe we might get them in the final again. Going from day one, we weren't, we weren't sure what was going to happen. So getting them out of the way was huge. You know, we were very positive that we, you know, when we did, but we had to move on and Ballinamore were another kettle of fish, you know. 
they have a lot of legs. They move dives, just never stop. <laughs> you mentioned the, the wide gap at the end of the game. At what point did you realise you were going to win this? What, 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 what moment was it like, OK, I think this is in the bag now? When they shouted at me to come off, as uh, they were shouting at me to come off, and there was a girl, uh, Siobhan Feely, going on for me, and I kind of thought, oh, God, how long's left? And they said six minutes, and I looked up at the scoreboard, and then a few minutes later looked up again, and we got another, what, two goals or a goal and a few points? I can't even remember what the end score was at this stage, so I kind of got a bit excited then, but until the whistle went, we were terrified because you see how quick a few goals can be banged in. Like, But do you know what? We came here to do something, and we done it, and I'm so proud of all the girls. Couldn't ask for a better group of girls, and we're going to celebrate tonight because... This has been coming a long, long time. In terms of the Connacht Club Championship, obviously that's the next thing. How much thought have you given to that? Or have you even allowed yourself to think towards that at all? Well, I wouldn't say we even thought about it. Like The girls are just saying there, we have a game next week or something. I never even thought of that at all. Um, I suppose this was the big milestone. We had to get over this and we'll focus now and hopefully get over the next one. Do you know, a bonus to get over this, but the next is even another bonus. So hopefully... I'm kind of missing a few celebrations up there. <laughs> I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. Well done today. And go enjoy the celebrations with your teammates. Thanks, Perfini. Thanks a million. Maren Devaney, your thoughts after uh, first ever county championship senior, at senior level for Glen Carman Hamilton? Yeah, look, Perfini, it's, it's a win like no other. All the underage titles and everything up to this has literally... Well, every, everything means something, but today is just the happiest day we've had in the club for nearly... A long three years of hurt and heartbreak and we're finally here so we're absolutely delighted. It's kind of an obvious question but how does it compare to the last two years like how how much does the agony of the last two years help you when you're facing into a game like today? Look at the agony has drove us on and I don't think only for those losses we would have pushed on so much today. We were coming in here with no losses or just uh, winning championships out of nowhere. We wouldn't know what, what, what it felt like to lose. And look at today is the day we have lived and breathed for, for the last three years. St. Joseph's knocked out for the last three years in a row. Two weeks ago, we got the lift we needed. We went out, we had a solid performance and we bet them. So look at, we're absolutely over the moon. In terms of, I don't want to reflect on losses today, but it's kind of important to formulate how, how high you are at the moment. You, you got beaten by Ballinamore in the group stage. How much of an impact did that have in the preparation for today's game? Yeah, look, maybe we got a bit complacent in the uh, round game against Ballinamore. Probably went up thinking they were only up from intermediate and took them as a bit of a, <coughs> uh, an intermediate team. But look, we, we got a, a rude awakening that day. They took us off, off our, our high step. And look, I think we showed today that we have had heartbreak and we've learned from it. So I just actually cannot describe how much this means to our club. The fans and everything have got behind us so much in the last week and the last three years they've nearly felt the hurt more than we have these three years and taking down those signs for the last couple of years when we've lost is a hurt like no other and I know Ballinamore will feel the same they'll come back next year and they'll be just like us they'll feel every single bit of pain when they step out in the pitch next year so I wish them the very best of luck and they're a, a cracking team and fair play to them up from intermediate and they showed exactly what they're what they're able for so on a personal note, of course, you've got your own commitments with Sligo Rovers in the Women's National Under-17 League. Uh, you've also now got a Connacht Club Championship to deal with. Uh, that going to cause pause problems for you? Can you have your work out how to be in two places at once yet? Look at We'll not worry about that for another while. We've got a week to celebrate and we're out again. And by God, will we celebrate. <laughs> lockdown or no lockdown, we'll find somewhere. Poor Corrigan. It's been, a, it's been a long wait, but finally, Leitrim Senior Champions, you must be delighted. I can't put it into words what it means to those girls there, Brefney. They've been on the road so, so long. There's a few of them there. Uh, Cammy, Emer, um, Amanda. They've been here since the club started, like, you know. And uh, to get today, so vital. Vital for the club. Vital for Lancaster Manor ladies. I know, Roel, this is your second year. Disappointment last year. You came back. You made no mistakes this year. There was going to be no tight finishes where it might not go your way. You were, you looked, always looked in doubt, or never looked in doubt, really, but th those last two goals from Leah Fox really did put that edge. Probably an unfair gloss on the scoreline. Oh, absolutely. You know, and Ballinamore, you know, we're never out of it, even though, you know, we worked extremely hard all over the field. And, you, you know, it was from everyone. Everyone we brought on. They all done their part. Everyone that, there's girls that didn't get on, 
but they were, you know, they put in the work the same as everyone else, and it mean, mean, mean so much. It's amazing. There was almost a lottery to pick the player of the match. There were so many ca- candidates. They really could have picked anyone from one to, to, to 20 in, in terms of the numbers that came in. Um, you must be delighted with individual performances as well as the team performance. Yeah, they stood up. They stood, stood up, you know. We have, we have go-to players, every team does, and they all stood up today, like, you know, and it, do you know what I mean? You, we're lucky we were able to pick 15 or 16 or whatever you only had to pick one today I wouldn't envy that because they were all amazing it was class in terms of the next uh, few weeks now of course kind of club championship campaign ahead of you uh, thoughts going into that I don't really I think we play in intermediate and that's for two weeks that's in two weeks time I think in my said next week no look at I, I'm look at I come to this uh, county and there's a kind of a thing of Leitrim teams coming out into Connacht uh, you know we've done good enough to get here and I was involved with senior men and a wee bit of attitude at that you know everywhere from Leitrim teams when they get to Connacht it's a bonus it's not going to be a bonus for us we're going in there if it's our only chance uh, we'll take it in terms of that I suppose teams have come out and all um St Joseph's had a bit of a run in that but didn't win the title in the end uh, is an All-Ireland Intermediate Championship would that even be part of your th- thinking now or is it just take the next game preferably no, 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 no pressure no, look at there's a group of girls there that will not be found wanting when we step out on the pitch in two weeks time we'll take it one step at a time like we, I spoke to you after St Francis game if you recur, look over the things I said that we're on a quest a mission and those girls I've got one step. They've, they've got over one, one hill or one wall, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them now. These girls can do anything. They're that good. In terms of some of the players in your team, they've got other commitments, whether it's Derbyless boxing or um, I know Mern is involved with soccer as well with Sligo Rovers. Part of the hardest part of a manager's job in ladies football is actually getting your best players available all season, and you haven't had a problem with that. You haven't missed them at all one year. In terms of the Connacht club, you're going to need those players at that level. Oh yeah. They'll be there. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. They, they're brilliant at actually uh, juggling their, all the careers and all that. They'll be there. They're they're part of this. They, you know, we've ninety percent attendance at training. Nobody misses. N- nobody misses training. Like you know, unless it's for a very good reason. And that that probably has changed. Maybe it's a COVID thing or whatever. But look at. I'm so proud of those girls. It's amazing. Yeah, there really is a fantastic team spirit in that camp as well. Pork, thanks very much. Congratulations. Uh, Leitrim Senior Women's Champions. It's got a nice ring to it. Uh, well done. Yeah, I like it. Thanks a million, Brefney. God bless. Laura O'Dowd, it's always tough to lose a county final. Uh, what's your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely gutted, to be honest. You know, I think we, we really thought that we could put it up to them a lot more. Their experience really shone through there and come that last 15 minutes you know they fired in two goals to really seal the deal and you could see our experience we had you know their experience really did come through so yeah absolutely got it sometimes it's say you have to lose a final before you can kind of come back and win one the following year they've lost two before that St Joseph's had lost a couple uh, you back next year absolutely I think this is only going to make us stronger I mean Manor Hamilton like you said St Joseph's have been the same situation you know it would have been Oh, an an absolute miracle, you know, to come from being really nothing in senior the last few years to come and win, you know, this year it would have been, it would have taken something special. And unfortunately, we just didn't have enough to get us across the line. You had some company there for most of the game. I think Amanda Sweeney and uh, Mary Alice uh, Maguire are going to tuck you into bed tonight. They were so close to you for the whole game. How annoying is that as a player when there's literally two players on you, you just can't get any space at all? Yeah, I mean, I suppose because the fact, you know, throughout the whole championship so far, I haven't had that, you know, I've always had the one player on me, so it was definitely different, but I mean, at the same time, it gave me an opportunity to run into space and leave, you know, areas free for our full forwards to run into. Um, Unfortunately, we just didn't, we didn't make use of it, and I mean, that's just the way it goes. In terms of the season, though, I know it's very immediate after the final whistle here on the county final day, but you have to be happy with how far the team has come this year because it is a new club, even though you were there as Victor Gales last year. It's a new club. You're playing without the likes of Sarah McLaughlin and others who aren't there this year. It's a fantastic season when it's taken in the whole. Yeah, absolutely. Like we Obviously, we're leaving here disappointed, but we're looking at this as a whole, a whole season that like we were brilliant over the whole season, you know. We were undefeated up to the finals, so that's why it is disappointing to lose. But, I mean, we're the first time, this is the first team to ever make it to a county senior final. So we made history for the club. I mean, we made history for ourselves. And, I mean, at least we can take that with us.
Well, listen, hard luck today. Thanks very much for chatting to us. And uh, I suppose Drown the Sorrows might come back next year stronger and, and better than ever. Exactly. Thanks, Marfany. At intermediate level, a similar game with Mohol running out winners against a drummer hair side that, although they gave everything, just fell a little bit short. Inspired by Dervla Byrne, the addition to their team since that group defeat two drummer hair earlier in the competition saw Mohol just have too much firepower up front, and the lack of a, a proven finisher up front for drummer hair really did cost them in the end. After the game, I caught up with Dervla Byrne, Denise Stenson and the Mughal manager, Barry Lupton. Uh, I didn't have anyone from Drummer Hair because, to be quite honest with you, the presentation went on for so long that Drummer Hair literally packed and went. Uh, as soon as the presentation was over, I didn't get a chance, and they didn't really look like they were in the mood to talk. A tough, tough day for Drummer Hair, but they will come back, and they will have an opportunity to get their hands on that trophy, I think, next year. It's going to be an interesting battle between themselves, St. Bridget's, and a couple of other teams. I know Carrick are improving year on year as well, so it's going to be an interesting intermediate championship next year. And don't discount from Kieran. Decent performer. We'll talk about them in just a moment in terms of the junior championship. But before we go, let's hear from the participants on the Mohol side. Denise Denson, Derville Byrne, and their manager, Barry Lupton. Denise Denson, your thoughts after that? Oh, I'm just delighted, Breffany. Um, I don't really have much words to say. I'm just so thrilled for the group of the girls that are there. They're there an awful long time, you know, and I'm only coming into it the last year. And I'm just so proud for them and the management team that we had this year. You know, the work that they put in was just phenomenal. From the first day that we set out, I missed a few sessions early on. I was away with a trip at school, and as soon as I stepped on that field, I knew that they believed that we could win a championship th- this year. And that patience and that determination, you know, I fed off that every single train, and, and every girl from 1 to 33 fed off that dedication and commitment, and we all believed we could do it this year. You know, they were after losing three in a row the last three years, coming down from senior, having won in 12 years. So we just really knew that we could do it this year, and thank God it paid off today. In terms of, I suppose, the, the game today, you played drummer here a couple of weeks ago, it was over at the game in Mull. It didn't go so well for you that day, you never really got going. What was the difference between the two games? Oh, look, it's like black and white, the difference. Um, in the group stages, we, all, we always had a plan this year and we tried to stick with that plan. And I suppose a few minutes before the Drummer Hair um, game, three of our players had to step out due to an injury. So, uh, you know, two minutes before the game, our uh, routine and our strategies were kind of messed up. So I myself, you know, was um, meant to be midfield. I had to go to a wing forward then and a number of us had to change positions. And look, that's not an excuse of the way we played that day, but we knew that we didn't give it um, a good enough shot that day. You know, we hadn't played drummer hair obviously last year. They were in senior, so we kind of j- just let them run all over us that day. You know, um, let them in. They were good in defence, and we just couldn't get the scores up. We only scored three points, which was horrific. And from that day on, we said we wouldn't let it happen again. Today, that never happened. You started bright and early, three early scores, and then when the goals started coming in, they just looked like only one winner from that point on. Yeah, um, it doesn't feel like that, and I think it's funny, every game that we've played, even if we have won by, look, you know, 10 points or 15 points, it never feels like we're winning by that on the pitch. Um, you always feel from the, until the final whistle, or take it in 15 minutes, and it's just so tough to keep that momentum going. You know, I had a job to do today, and it was relentless. Um, it was absolutely relentless, but we were never, ever going to give up. If that was 65 minutes, if that needed extra time, we were going to make it happen today. Now you actually work across the road here in the in this school here in Ballinamore. Some of the girls you teach involved in the county final tomorrow at senior level. You'll be playing them next year. Uh, what kind of a dynamic does that bring to, I suppose, the school day? Oh, look, I absolutely love teaching those girls. From the, when they were in first year, um, some of them are leaving cert now. I started when they started in first year and uh, the FINA girls as well, who, are, who will be in the junior tomorrow evening. Both sets of girls are brilliant, you know, and I think... We have a good rapport, all of the staff and the students have a good rapport over there 
and it's all about leaving it on the field. You know, I'll be able to walk into school Monday morning, please God, and meet them and for them to congratulate you or wish you best of luck on Friday. And it's just so nice, the, the rural community of that. And even through lockdown, that's what the GA is all about. You know, in having that social group, whether it be teacher, student, whether it be best friends, it doesn't matter down here. It's just trying to get us all across the line and hopefully we'll keep it in South Leitrim, the, the intermediate, the senior and the junior this time. <laughs> And finally, I suppose, your dad, Enda, well-known county chairman of the Men's County Board. Um, has he been given D Ward lessons on how to give long speeches? Because that <laughs> went on for, I think, 17 minutes. We timed it. I know. Oh, look, Deirdre, I can't say enough about her. You know, I've known her for years, and it just meant so much to her. I could feel it last year, and, you know, she's coming to her, the end of her career, even though she mightn't, she mightn't say that. But um, she just gives it so much heart, and... You know, last night we met and you could just feel that we had to do this for every single player. But Deirdre nearly, not that she deserves it more than anyone else, but she put every single part of her on the line today, every single match, even in training. You know, she gives it her all. So I think she just wanted to, to relay that or to get that across in her speech and to thank everyone that made her journey possible. Well, listen, well done today. Congratulations and enjoy the celebration. Thank you very much, Bethany. Thank you. Dervla Byrne, uh, what's your thoughts after that? You must be delighted. Yeah, delighted now. We've been knocking on the door the last few years and obviously we've put a lot of work in this year especially and just very happy now to get it over the line today and get the win. In terms of the game, you opened a fairly early lead and you never really looked like you were going to be in danger of losing that. You just kept that scoreboard ticking over. Um, you got a nice goal yourself from uh, from distance, the third one, to kind of put the, that gap between you. Happy enough with how you played? Yeah, I think we, we started very quickly out with the blocks and you know we hit them hard from the start. Them couple of goals kind of killed them off. And then after that, they were chasing the game. So as a defensive team, that was very tough for them to try and get themselves back in. But I think we really kept the foot on the gas then in the second half and really pushed on and kept our defence nice and solid. I know you've gone on to play with Piedmont and other teams in Ireland and stuff, but how much does it mean to you coming back to the, your own town and, and winning it with the girls you grew up with? Yeah, it's great to come back now to the club. Obviously, I've played with them all, all, all three years on the way up, like starting under 12 all the way up. And we've always kind of won underage titles, but this is our, our first senior title, or my first senior title anyway. And... As D Ward was saying there, it's their first title since 2008, so it's a great feeling to finally get it home. Obviously, of course, the promotion comes with this championship win, up with the, 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 the big teams in the senior championship next year. Mo will be able to mix it up there? Yeah, I, I surely hope so anyway. I think we definitely we have the standard of a senior team, and I hope come next year that we keep the same group together and we can really we can really get a good crack at the senior championship, yeah. Listen, thanks very much for chatting me, and the very best look. Uh, well done today. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Barry Lupton, your thoughts after that final? Delighted, absolutely delighted to know for myself, two other lads with me and the girls, sort of fantastic win. In terms of the game, talk us through your, I suppose, the preparation coming into it, because Drumahair had beaten you in the group stages. Was that a worry coming into today's game? No, never was. From the, the moment the, the final whistle was blown against Drumahair last day, we started preparing again for playing them again. Uh, this was the game you started really really well bright and early and then they kind of fairly wasteful with a couple of chances that they did create they just seemed to be pushing them to the left or right of the posts and it just they never really seemed to get in gear in their forward division at all no they didn't but credit to our girls we didn't give them a chance to, for that to happen for them we, 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 we just defended the numbers and look as I say it worked in our favour not theirs and thank God it did What's been different about the team this year? Because this is the fourth consecutive final, but you've managed to get across the line this year when you maybe didn't quite get that win in the last three years. What's the different dynamic in the in the group this year? Hunger, heartache, never give up. Really, to you know, like the, the pain of losing has finally has to be has to be cured. And today, you see it out there. The girls got over the line. The heartache is over. Now to move on. On a personal note, of course, now you get the opportunity to, to take this team into a senior championship next year. Uh, it's a big step up. A few teams have found that in terms of St. Bridget's um, struggle this year as Ahuil and last year as county champions. What's your thoughts for the next 12 months ahead for this group of girls, this club? Well, look, that's completely up to the girls. You know, it's, it's, it's all going to boil down to the girls if they want to put in the same commitment next year as they did this year. And again, like you wouldn't believe the commitment. The, the work the, everything them girls put into this year I, I, I just hope that they put in again next year Of course you do have the small matter of the Connacht Club Championship in the next few weeks um, do you approach that any different do you keep these girls training and just focus that because there really is an opportunity there for Leitrim clubs to do well given that you'll be in that junior championship grade in Connacht but The quality of the, of the players on that team why not give it a rattle like we, we, will, we will enjoy tonight definitely will no doubt about it but believe me come Wednesday night 
them girls will be preparing for a championship or a Connacht championship in, on, for Saturday. Of course, player of the match today, Derville Byrne, will be an integral part of that ch- uh, championship push at Connacht level. Will she be available to you? You don't know? I uh, Genuinely, I can't answer that. I don't think so. Like we, we, we will be without a number of girls for next Saturday. Kiva Cannon as well, number one. She did, girl, she did ligaments in her ankle two weeks ago. She's been on painkillers and she got an injection yesterday. Strapped, you name it. She got everything done to be right for today and I can't see her being chance next Saturday. Well, listen, Barry, congratulations today. I know it's been a long season, waiting to see if you'd have a season, uh, but it's ended up in the best possible manner for Mohol and, and the very best luck to you and, and your girls in the Connacht Championship campaign ahead. Thanks very much, Brethany. Fair play to you. Now, the match of the weekend from a women's football point of view was most definitely in Leitrim Village to cap off the weekend. And I've spoken about the junior competition in ladies football all season. It's been highly entertaining. Uh, Not exactly the best standard of football, let's be honest. Individual mistakes and chances missed and everything, but it has added to the drama so, so much through the group stages and into the knockout phase of the competition. And yesterday was absolutely no different. 11 points up at one stage. Fina looked like all they had to do was just keep the ball for the last 15 or 20 minutes of the match. Unfortunately, Drum Kieran had other plans and a goal just before the final water break put eight points between the sides. And it just seemed to get the better of a young Fina side. And unfortunately, they just didn't have the nerve or the legs to cope with what Drum Kieran brought for that last 15 minutes. They forced extra time and even had a chance to win it at the death before extra time found one point lead for Fina at the end of the game but then Drum Kieran snapped again and the long ball in broke nicely to the corner forward who rounded the keeper and put the ball into the net to send the Drum Kieran fans into raptures and that the celebrations were bigger nearly than what Matter Hamilton had after the senior final a couple of hours earlier. A fantastic game, not one for the faint-hearted. There was sin binnings, there was coaches been spoken to, been asked to vacate the premises, uh, but there was so much going on and lots of controversy and just real drama, a real absolute humdinger of a championship final. And uh, congratulations to Drum Kieran and sincerest heartfelt uh, thoughts going out to Fina because it looked like they had it in the bag with 15 minutes to go and they, they will know it's one that got away. After the game, I spoke to the Fina manager, Paul Drowley, but I also spoke to the captain of the winning team, Charlene Maguire, woman of the match, Anne-Marie Gallagher, and the winning manager also, Tom McGinty. Here's what they all had to say to me. Charlene Maguire, you must be delighted after that. Junior champions. Yes, absolutely delighted. Um, I can't believe we actually won in the end, uh, especially after last year when we lost down in Mohol. It's a, a great feeling now to come out on top this year. It seems to be the trend this weekend. All Leitrim champions at all levels were beaten finalists last year. <laughs> yeah, it must be something. Uh, this year is our year, I suppose, for everyone that did lose last year. It does give you an extra push on to win this year, especially if you feel the pain of losing. Talk us through the game, because it looked like you were dead and buried with about 15 minutes to go. Yeah. Uh, you scored a goal just before that water break, and it seemed to give you that impetus into yeah. the last 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, definitely, because we, we played FINA, Earlier on in the year, it was a completely different story. We came out on top with a strong win. And then, of course, we didn't think that it was going to be an easy battle, but they really came hard at us at the start. And we kind of got thrown a bit. But, um, yeah, there were stages there when I was looking at the scoreboard, trying to figure out where everything was going wrong. And not imagine going down the town without the cup. But we pulled it together in the end, and that goal really helped us and pushed us on, gave us the motivation that we needed. Some really good individual performances as well as a, a fine team performance, yeah. particularly in that close in the closing stages. And of course, through extra time, you just had those extra legs oh, just to, yeah. to really push it home. But you left it late to, to win it. <laughs> yeah, we definitely did. We uh, put ourselves under a lot of unneeded pressure. But um, I know our trainings throughout the year were um, very intense, especially compared to last year. And over lockdown as well, in our WhatsApp group, we had like aims of meeting certain 100 kilometers per week and everyone was out running 5k's and doing their own bit so that really uh, held us there in the extra time for that extra bit of uh, mileage in the legs as they say. <laughs> in terms of obviously the difference between this year and last year it's, yeah. it's polar opposites but how does it feel having, having gone through that? Um, yeah well at the stage we thought that um, there was going to be no football and we didn't know what was going to happen but having all the girls home because everyone wasn't obviously in different countries and people weren't going away for the summer we knew that this year would be a great year you know we had everyone at home except one girl actually flew back to uh, 
England, Bridget Galler, who was a big loss, but um, that was the only girl that we didn't have here today for the final. So, yeah, it was different definitely to last year, but some positives out of it too. What's the future for Drum Kieran? Obviously, you move up now to intermediate. Yeah. It's a big step up. Uh, these group of girls, able for it? Definitely, like we've been there before. Um, I think, especially being in junior for two years in a row, like you go out into games and you hammer teams, and it's not real competition. It doesn't really test our football skills, which we have loads of. Like we're a very good group of footballers. So hopefully next year now will be a good experience and more challenges, and hope we'll push on and do well in intermediate. Listen, congratulations today. Go enjoy your celebrations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Amory Gallagher uh, must be delighted. Junior Championship winners for 2020 in Drum Kieran. Yes, thank God. We made hard work at that. Um, absolutely. Very, very tough game. Fina, it could have been, it went anyone's way in the end, but thankfully in the end we just kept it going and didn't give up and it went our way today. Yeah. You had a great uh, goal there in the, late in the second half just before the water break when the ball just kind of landed nicely for you and you could just yeah. slot it into the bottom <laughs> corner and um, what's it like get that kind of a goal just before a break in play and you get a chance yeah. to regroup no it's we definitely needed it and um, we needed the scores we were we were how many 10 points down so or even more and we definitely needed needed the needed the goal and it felt like definitely we need the lift as well so it was great to get and nicely nice to get then going into the second half you left it very late, even in normal time, to, to level it. Then you missed a chance to, to win it. Yeah. And then it took the, literally the last kick of the game almost to score the goal that won you the match. Um, what's it like on the nerves when you're in that situation where you're just that point behind going into the la closing stages of a, of a period of play? No, it's, it's awful. But that game was just a hor a horrible on the nerves. Like It was just so tough very tough but I'm just glad in the end everyone played their heart out and um, just glad we came out with a win yeah obviously played through last year's disappointment as well in yeah. terms of the and um, losing the final what's the the mood in the camp like compared to last year obviously it's got to be oh, much better brilliant brilliant yeah we did not want to repeat of last year against Kildra um, it was very close again last year and then we've been to finals intermediate finals before that too and um, have lost, so we really, really needed this win, yeah, to progress and can't wait till next year, yeah. Well, listen, player of the match today, congratulations, junior champions, it's a it's a nice evening for you, congratulations yeah, again. Thanks very much, thank you. Podge Rowley, your thoughts after that defeat? Actually, I'm starting Podge Rowley, your thoughts after that defeat? Uh, I'm extremely disappointed with the outcome naturally, I suppose, but I'm also very proud of the girls the improved an awful lot I think during the year we played them here earlier in the year and we got a right Hamilton I suppose all you could say so since that they have worked really really hard on the defence and we have worked on a lot of stuff in training extremely proud extremely disappointed and I think the game could have gone anyway really in the end but look at fair play to them here I think they are I want I have congratulations to them the deserve it in the end I suppose they just got that goal when, when it counted they stepped up got the goal so fair play to them and I know they lost the final last year so that's the new the pain of defeat which we know now and I hope you know I hope that will drive us on next year and maybe we'll, we'll have the trophy next year that's really it you know in terms of the game today obviously you came into it as you mentioned kind of as outsiders in most people's opinions maybe that wasn't the view from inside the camp but it definitely would have been from the neutral point of view in terms of the game though you opened up a, a comfortable lead early in the game and then it all just seemed to go wrong late in that second half yeah we we definitely came into the game i think on the dogs on on the previous day out but since we played them here and as i say we have worked on a lot of stuff and I know the girls were coming in confident, like we maybe other people mightn't have thought it, but I know I felt I felt if we worked hard we could win it. But I also thought it would be an extremely hard battle, which it was. Uh, to, what went wrong in the last 15 minutes is hard to say. I think momentum is a lot of things in football. And they just got a few points and we began to panic a little bit and you know the doubt set into our head and they pushed on, pushed on, and as I say, you know, we got to half time then and I thought in the extra time then we kind of picked it up a bit and we were in the game all the way I think an extra time again until that goal went in you know but uh, what went wrong that's you know it's a tough thing to say in football what goes wrong sometimes you know little little things small margins sometimes and I think I think attitude is everything and our girls just panicked a little bit at the end you know they panicked a little bit and uh, hopefully they'll learn from it that's that's all I, you know hopefully. Do you think it's a case that Drum Kieran won the final or you maybe might have lost the final? Yeah that's a <laughs> Good question. Um, 
I suppose we probably feel we lost it naturally because we had it in the bag, definitely. So I think we probably do feel we lost it. But look, I can't take anything away from them here. And they're a fine team. And we have played them We played them a lot, as they said themselves there. We have played them a lot because we've seen all of be at the same grades, let it be intermediate or junior. And we have played them a lot in the last few years. And it's always a battle, you know. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for them because they're a hard team to play against and they give you, they give everything and that's... You know, they're a, good, they're a good, honest team like ourselves, a country team. You know, they're not amalgamated with anybody small, fall powers like ourselves. And, you know, fair play to them. Podge, hard luck today and uh, well done on a, a fine performance. It's definitely the highlight of the weekend in terms of drama, at least. Yes. Yeah, I think it is. The other games were probably a bit one-sided. But look, at, I'd rather have the, have the win. But look, at, I'm very proud of the girls and I hope, I think they've all improved as players during the year. I hope to have and I hope to push on next year and maybe we'll have the cup next year. Thank you. Hard luck again. OK, thanks, Brian. Tom McGinty, we uh, we spoke after last year's final, and this year uh, it's a slightly different s- right. situation. To surely, it's you know it's a great feeling, like you know, for the girls and everything, like you know, we put in a lot of hard work, like you know, since the final last year. You know, this is a team that I've been working with for three years now, and look at, we have a lot of young players coming through and real good talent, you know. So look at, I, I didn't do it all on my own. I had a great man, Junior Hayes, from Park Murphy there, you know. Look at, and my daughter there, you know. Claudia has been at every training session, you know, and she's, you know, she helps out, you know, and all help out. Like, it's a great parish to be in, like, you know, I'm originally from Mayo, like, you know, so, like, coming into a parish, and this is my second time now, I was with the lads first, and I got the feeling that, you know, these girls, I watched them in an under-16 final four years ago, and the bets are on my hair, and I said to myself, when, when no one else was there to take on the job, I said, look, I said, put myself forward for it. And it just worked out, like, you know what I mean? We've built a strong, strong panel of 30 players, like, three years ago. We were struggling with 15, maybe, uh, 15 aside. We played 15. We didn't have 15 players. Like, we were using the limit of on the underage system. Look, but look, the club is mighty. Like, Chairman, Michal Ford, like, you know, Eamon O'Grady, the oldest man here. Like, he is a credit. He, when I was down doing the football field, he'd be down giving out to me. He'd be telling me what I was doing wrong, you know. So, look, at, it's all a learning process. Look, and we're going to go on and into intermediate next year, and we're going to give it a good out shake. Today's game, of course, uh, it looked like at one stage it might be just that touch too much in terms of the gap, uh, I think 11 points at one stage. Um, where, What happened that you could turn that around? Well, we brought the girls in at half time. We spoke to them, like, you know, we knew that we had done the work. We had the legs, you know what I mean? Look, at, we went through the whole championship this year. Like, we won by big margins. Like, Manor Hamilton was the only team that put us to the pin of our collar. When we got them the second time, we put them to the pin of their collar. You know, and we watched FINA last Sunday, myself and Junior Hazard, and I guarantee you one thing, I knew that FINA were going to be up for this fight. Like, you know, but to get an 11-point lead on us, I wasn't too happy at that at half time. Like, you know, and some of the girls will be telling me tonight what I said to them and what I didn't say to them. But, look, at, I'm not worried about that tonight. Look, at, this, this championship boss for them, right? And, look, we've won it. and That's all you can do. Intermediate football now next year. Will you stay on and give that a crack? Well, I don't know. I'll have to sit down and think about it. You know, you know, like my family and everything. Like, you know what I mean? But look, at, I kind of say I couldn't. You know, and I kind of say I will, uh, will and I won't. You know what I mean? But look, I'll, I'll sit down and months time and think about it. You know what I mean? You know, look, at, football is in me. <laughs> and look, at, I'm not going to give up yet. Like, you know what I mean? But look, at, if we go at the intermediate championship next year. We have a great team. We will shake the best of them. And look, at, I feel sorry for Fina because we were in that position last year. And Podge Rowley, and he is a, a sheer gentleman. Like, like he had a real tough week of it this week and everything. So I know everyone, like last, this time last year, I had a tough week before the county final. And look, at, we just get on with it. Look, we've won it and we're junior champions. And thank God for that. Well done. All right, thank you. And finally, we have a little bit of soccer this weekend. Carrick Town played out a two-all draw with Colry Bowes at home in the showgrounds on the Boyle Road in Carrick and Shannon on Sunday morning. And after the game, I spoke to Cormac Smith, their centre-back, who scored an own goal at the start of the game. We'll hear what his thoughts were on that, as well as his manager, Alessio Mignone. Cormac Smith, your thoughts after that game? Ah, could have went either way. It was one of those games where they had chances, we had chances, but... We did well to come back, both the times we went behind, so it's a point gained more than two points lost, I think. In terms of the time you went behind, let's talk about that first one. Uh, on a, from a personal point of view, never nice to score an own goal, but talk yeah. us through what happened. 
as one of the corner came in, the first man missed it, and I wasn't expecting it. Just sort of hit against me and went in. Happens to the best of us, I suppose. <laughs> you rallied well, and you came back to come from behind twice to secure that draw. But you had chances to win it. We did, yeah. Shane Byrne had a few chances. Ryan Dwyer as well, but they were a strong side as well. The other team, they were very fit. They ran us the whole game, so not a bad result, I don't think. There was one clearance off the line as well at the very end that maybe they could have nicked all three points again. Yeah. Maybe I redeemed myself a bit there, cleared it off the line, but yeah, the keeper for us, uh, Armand Loughlin had a good game as well, so he saved us a few times. So. In terms of the league campaign, obviously there's two games unbeaten, uh, two good start to the league campaign, but Callery would have been one of the favourites going into the season for this title. Are you happy to have taken the point today? Is that kind of a good omen for the future? Yeah, I wouldn't say it was a bad result, but at the same time we could have won it, like a couple of chances, but um, yeah, they were a strong side. I, they got a, they had a good win last week as well, so... Not a bad start to the season going forward. It's a bit stuff to build on anyways. What's the new season like? I know there was uh, f- troubles on the pitch and off the pitch last year. You didn't finish the season because of COVID. In terms of this year, uh, what's the mood like in the camp? Yeah, everybody's getting along well. I think we're all good friends at this stage now and the manager's running us ragged. So we're all we're set for the season anyways. Listen, well done today and we've chatted to you over the course of the season. Thank you. Alessio Mignone, two games into the season, undefeated, a win, a draw today. What are your thoughts? Uh, I'm happy. Uh, the feeling of, after this game uh, is uh, I I lost two points, but uh, you know it's football. So. In terms of the game today, you twice you had to come from behind. Is that something that you see happening a lot this season? It's it's not easy because uh, it's always a win, draw, loss game. Uh, every every game could be. We lost a draw. Uh, it's always a, 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 like a fight, but uh, we have to work on ourselves, on our way of game, and we have to believe we are the the team to be to have beaten. You play, your team played some really nice football today. You created some really good chances. Just maybe didn't find the back of the net to win the game. And um, are you happy with how the team are playing? Uh, after the first half. Uh, the first half, I was not so happy because uh, I didn't see what uh, I asked to my team. But uh, in the second half, uh, we fixed some positions, some uh, movements. Uh, I'm very, very happy for this and for all, um, of all of my players. In terms of the, the squad you have at your disposal, are you happy uh, with kind of the shape of the team and the people that are making up the team? Are you happy with the the, the different options you have? Yeah, absolutely. I have. 26 players they can play every Sunday so the starting 11 is not easy to to be chased but uh, they are all 26 good players and of course Shane Byrne with two goals today you got to be happy with his performance absolutely absolutely so it's not only about the goals but he helps the team uh, during the defensive phase uh, he helps the team Everywhere, so he's a very good player. But I, I don't want to talk about just one player. It's, uh, today is 16 players because 11 more uh, with uh, five substitutions. They play very well. Listen, well done today. A good result against the the favourites coming into the season. So uh, great to see up and running and four points on the board after two games. Thank you so much. And that, folks, is all we have time for today. An absolute massive thank you to the local enterprise office for the sponsorship of the show and to everyone who helped me and ch- chatted to me this weekend. Thank you to everyone, uh, as always, who helps make the show what it is. To all the girls who helped me throughout the season, it was a huge pleasure to watch all of your seasons culminate in those fantastic finals over the weekend. Uh, congratulations to everyone who won. Commiserations to those who will be planning already to do one better next year. The one positive I'll say for the beaten finalists is every single one of this year's winners were the beaten finalists at that grade last year. And there will be opportunities there to pick yourselves up and go again. If the performance is shown in parts of yesterday's game, there's anything to go by. There's definitely enough talent in all of those losing sides yesterday to be on the winning side next year. So the very, very best of luck to you. To everyone else, we'll be f- obviously previewing the men's final this weekend. It's going to be centre stage. It's probably the, the game of the weekend. And hopefully a really good attacking game of two young sides, Mull versus St. Mary's 
in Park Sean McDiarmid on Sunday afternoon. The game, of course, live on the live streaming service from Leitrim GA. So check that out and subscribe early and get yourself sorted for that on Sunday. I will be back on Friday with that preview of the county final and whatever other sport is going on over the weekend. There are other bits and pieces as well. We'll be back then. Talk to you soon.